How's it going? Fox again for Sounds is on tutorials. For the last couple of days I've been working on a little track. Uh, the main reason for it really is just for me to try and get used to Absinthe a little bit more. So I've been trying to use Absinthe for all the synth parts. So far I've got one, two, three, four parts made with Absinthe. The track's not finished, not by a long run. Uh, I don't really know what sort of music is if I'm honest. I think it's sort of progressive house. It's a 124 BPM. It's nothing too serious at the minute. I'm going to finish it though because I'm having real good fun making it. But for now, I'll say I'm going to show you these four parts in four separate tutorials. Actually, I won't show you the pluck and the saw today because these two are identical. I've just uh, changed them ever so slightly. So, yeah, for today, we'll go over. Uh, I've called this one saw. It's just like a, a super saw lead. It's You can pretty much use it for loads of genres trance, house. I say this is sort of a progressive house track. But yeah, for now we'll go over this patch and I'll show you how to change it for the pluck. So as usual, I'll show you the sound on its own and I'll show you how I made it. This is the chord progression that I've got going on. I messed around with this for a while to get it sitting nice in the mix. It's a five note chord, well a three note chord and then I've used the A1 two notes down which is the root note just to beef it up a little bit. So yeah, if it, if you do want to make this sound for yourself and it doesn't sound as, as rich as this, it's because I've got quite a lot of notes going on in the sound. But yeah, here it is on its own. There you go, a nice rich sort of super sorry lead sound. So yeah, without further ado, I'll go ahead and create a new sound in Absinthe. Oscillator A, B and C are all the same. I used a real saw, saw real, for all three of them. For oscillator A, I changed it to double to thicken it up a bit. I transposed it up ever so slightly to 0 0.083 and I set the phase to 0 0.1. I'm going to transpose these three all a little bit differently uh, as we go through just to help thicken the sound up. Uh, in unison mode for oscillator A I set it to 4. Transpose the first one 0 0.02 again a very small amount. This is how much you sort of detune in the unison voice is it? It helps thicken the sound up, as I've already said. 0.25, sorry for the randomness. Oscillator B, I kept on single. Unison mode was 4 again. I transposed this up 0.03 and the random 0.125. Nice and straightforward, nothing too exciting. Don't do anything with a mod for oscillator A. You don't get an option with a mod for oscillator B because it's only on single. Oscillator C, I'll change this to fractalize. I'll play the sound actually first just as it is and then I'll change it to fractalize so you can see what difference it makes. So, just the three saws then. I set oscillator C to ratio and did it to 0 0.5. That's another way of saying down one octave. I could have transposed it minus 12. So yeah, in the unison mode for oscillator C, because it's in fractalized, you get a different, few different options. Actually, let me make sure I've got that set right. Main saw reel ratio 0 0.5. Change it to fractalize. In the uh, when it's unfractalized, you get different, uh, slightly different. You don't get any options like you do with this one to uh, choose a number of voices. So yeah, I transpose this to 0 0.06 and the random 0 0.125, same as oscillator B. So yeah, this is all three oscillators with this one unfractalized. <laughs> So 
sounding nice and thick already. Um, the first two oscillators, I used a high standard high pass filter, a negative six high pass filter for A and B. Cut off for the oscillator A, I set at two five seven, and for B a little bit higher, one two two five. Just to push everything out of the way, the other sounds I've got in the mix later on. Uh, because this was fractalized and it sounds a bit different to the other ones, I used a different filter. I used a comb filter for this. Set the cut off to one three three five. One three three five. The feedback I kept as it was at 0 0.5 and decibel at 0. So yeah, that's it. Real straightforward for the filter section. I'll set the envelopes up in a minute. I'll set the main filter up. I don't use any wave shaper, no effects. Um, I'll go through the effects I use on this. Uh, I prefer to use external effects rather than the effects went inside Absinthe. I mean, they're really, really good, but the uh, pipe one, which is their reverb, it's a little bit fiddly to get to get to grips with. Um, I haven't read the manual on Absinthe, if I'm honest. I'm just sort of learning as I go along. So, yeah, I always use external reverbs when I'm using Absinthe. But for now, yeah, no effect, no wave shaper, just a master filter. Again, I use a high pass, negative six, just to make sure nothing's getting past 253. Again, moving everything out of the way for the bass and the other, the other parts that I've got in my track. So yeah, as for the oscillators and the routing, that's it, real straightforward. We'll go ahead and set the envelopes up now. Oscillator A envelope I had quite plucky. This one just sort of came in at the start of the sound and then died off. Pull the decay down to about 0 0.5 and pull the release right back. This one I kept as standard pretty much. I just pulled the decay level down to about minus 3 decibels. Kept the release where it was. Oscillator C kept as exactly how it was when what it gives you as a preset. We need to set an envelope up for the filter now. So if you go back to the patch, right click on this frequency box, create a new envelope. This is now the envelope for the filter. Pull this first box down to give us a starting point, right dead zero. Pull the attack back to about in between 0 and 0.25, about 0.125. Keep the decay where it is. Pull the release right out on this, about 1.75. Yeah, that's it. That's it for the sound. Real straightforward. As I say, kept it on sustain mode. Bypass and sync, fuck sh sync buttons are both highlighted. You don't need to worry about anything else. So yeah, that's the sound done. I'll go through the effects that I've got in a minute. So yeah, the effects that I have got on this, as I said before, before, I always use an external reverb. I'll turn it off to show you what it sounds without it. Now with. Sounds a lot better with the reverb on, gives it a little bit more space. It, it made it sit a lot better with the other sounds that I've got going on. Our verb, a waves plugin, I'm sure you've all heard of it. It's a real straightforward interface. You've got pre-delay, time size, diffusion, decay, all your standard reverb controls. You've got a damping filter going in and a reverb EQ going out. I'll cut everything from the low end going out as I only wanted it to reverb the high ends. If you reverb low end of a sound, it can really muddy up your mix really quick. So yeah, I've got the wet dry set at 50%. Early reference and reverb, you don't really need to worry about then. The gain set at negative 3 decibels. That's it, no other processing really, just a little bit of EQ and just to boost this, this frequency here. Um, compressor after reverb, I always do compress it slightly, it helps bring the reverb out a bit in the sound. So yeah, reverb off. Reverb on. It um, dulls the sound down a bit at the start, but it helps boost it uh, later on in the higher frequencies, which is what I wanted. So yeah, that's it for that part. Um, I'll quickly show you the pluck now. It's not really worth me going through this in a separate tutorial. Because it is, it is the same sound in effect. I've just changed the uh, 
decay time just to give it a plucky feel. I'll show you the two clips open together. How I did this, um, I did the plucky sounds in the gaps of this saw sound. As you can see, the notes come in where the other notes tail out in this other MIDI clip. Real straightforward, really nice effect to get the two to sit together. I'll play the two sounds together and then I'll quickly show you what I did for the, for the pluck sound. So this is the sound on its own, as I say, I've uh, muted the saw one now, so it's just this pluck sound. It's exactly the same patch, I made it exactly the same, didn't change anything. All I did in the perform section was change the, pull the sustain and release down to zero, and messed around with the decay until I gave it that plucky sort of feel. Nice and easy, real straightforward. Two sounds in effect out of uh, one patch. Different processing on this. I use a different reverb for this one. Umbic A, which is an ambience processor, brilliant bit of kit. It's a reverb and some. You've got all these different filters. You've got early size references, different spread capabilities, and everything. A really, really good plugin. So I'll turn all these off. I've got a bit of uh, ping pong delay and EQ out as well. I'll turn these off quick so you can hear the sound without it. That's just a bit of ping pong delay, dry wet at 50, feedback at 36% on the set on the third setting, so it's in between the beat. Compressor on brings the, re the delay out even more. I've done a bit of uh, shelving EQ here, I've just pushed everything out of the way again for the bass and uh, another sound that I'm going to go through with later on. This is a bit of mid-side EQing because it's got the ping-pong delay, I wanted it to be really wide, the, pink, the, pink, the delay effect. So I've cut the lows and boosted the highs to make it sound like it's pinging right, right out to the sides. Without the reverb. With the reverb. I always tend to go reverb delay. People, I've heard people say delay then reverb. I think it always sounds better with a reverb before a delay. People are probably going to criticise me here. And I always do a compressor after a delay. Quite heavily on this one. It helps accentuate the delay. Accentuate the sound of the delays without having to boost the dry wet up and muddy in the mix up. But yeah, there you go. Two sounds out of one patch. Nice and easy. Nothing too complicated. Just free saw waves. So yeah, this is the beat that I've done anyway. I'll play it through quick, just so you can get a grip of what, what some of the other sounds are going to be like later on. I'll play this one on its own, actually. This is the sound we're going to be going through next time. Again, made with Absinthe. <laughs> So yeah, um, all I'm going to do now is just play this little beat through so you can hear what, I'm got, what I've done so far. If people like it, I might try and finish it. I'll be grateful if anybody can tell me what sort of style it is. I think it's sort of progressive, Elsie. I don't normally make music like this, but it sort of just fell together this way when I was making these sounds. So yeah, as always, please subscribe if you're watching these videos. It does help me to want to make more videos. Our YouTube and Google Plus page is Sound Design Tutorials. So yeah, I'll play this through and then it's out for me. Okay, cheers. Mm-hmm.
Thank you. 